Ms. Moreland. Dr. Casey uh, Das, is it Das? Yes, sir. Is associate professor and coordinator of the biorefining and carbon uh, cycling research program at the University of Georgia. His current work and interests focus on biomass conversion to energy and value-added products like chemical feedstocks and bioproducts. Through his research, he has authored or co-authored 43 peer-reviewed journal articles, six book chapters, and 95 conference papers, and he has participated as principal or co-principal investigator in over 50 federal, state, or industry-funded projects. He teaches senior-level engineering process design and environmental engineering courses, courses at the University of Georgia. Dr. Das, welcome to the Small Business Committee. Thank you, Congressman. Uh, Madam Chairman, members of the committee, it's a pleasure for me to be here to testify. In our research at the University of Georgia, I head the biorefining and carbon cycling program. The primary goal of this program is to develop technologies that reduce the carbon footprint, reduce greenhouse emissions, produce biofuels sustainably, and uh, create jobs in rural areas. It is my opinion that as we transition from the current fossil-based fuel economy to a more renewable energy economy, we have an opportunity and probably even an obligation to design a system of energy delivery that is sustainable and minimizing the net greenhouse gas emissions is a critical part of that. I'd like to touch on four points. First, if the goal is to minimize greenhouse gases and uh, create uh, jobs in rural areas and income to farms, then the first thing we should do is go after residues, as residues. There are a variety of industrial waste materials that are presently uh, put in landfills or are underutilized. It's well established that the greenhouse gas uh, load of uh, converting a waste to an energy is very low. And there are lots of technologies that can utilize these materials at the present moment. It appears to me that uh, this is not uh, completely utilized. The second point I'd like to make is that uh, if we want a sustainable biofuel future, we've got to diversify our options of crops available particularly those crops that are grow with minimal inputs, such as sorghum, which is a drought-resistant crop, can grow in marginal soils. Also, a crop like oilseed radish. It's a winter cover crop that is used uh, around the country, but nobody has ever looked at it as a biofuel crop, and it has potential. University of Georgia recently conducted some studies that are very promising. The third thing I'd like to touch upon is uh, if our goal is to reduce carbon footprint and create jobs, we've got to be open to a variety of other technologies than liquid transportation fuels alone. For example, anaerobic digestion. This is an old technology that's been around, but it's not presently very high on the spectrum of alternate fuels, primarily because the product of anaerobic digestion is methane, which is a gas. And uh, if you look at the carbon footprint of that compressed natural gas coming from anaerobic digestion. It is very, very low. There are people around the country, primarily in the private investment, that are exploiting that, but assistance from the government to make that a, a far-reaching uh, impact would be of uh, great assistance. A related technology is the algae biofuels. It's, it's cutting-edge technology, very recently come up uh, in the spectrum, and therefore it's a little behind corn ethanol or lignocellulosic ethanol. Therefore, uh, when you compare them directly, algae biofuels have disadvantages from a greenhouse gas uh, angle. So some alternate form of support for these cutting-edge technologies that, uh, that are just beginning to come into the spectrum is uh, useful. The last thing I'd like to point out is uh, today we are going after biofuels because biofuels are carbon neutral, and that's absolutely the thing to do. But the challenge in the future is reducing the CO2 that's already in the atmosphere. And one very appropriate technology to, to do that is the use of biochar. Biochar is a carbon-based byproduct of energy production. University of Georgia, among other universities around the world, is, is leading the 
technology development and technology transfer in this area. One of our Georgia companies, uh, Range Fuels, is also uh, a company that's uh, working with similar technology. The byproduct, biochar, is used as a carbon sequestration technology in soils. It has uh, significant agronomic benefits. It sequesters carbon for uh, for many years. It's uh, in the thousands of years. It's easy to quantify and will create local jobs. However, from what I see, there's very little discussion at the national level, at the federal agencies, or within the existing legislature or, or outstanding legislature legislations that uh, discuss this, and I'd like to bring that uh, to your attention. Thank you very much.